Well, it looks like we're going to be dealing with Sandy as we head on through this weekend, and the escape option, for the most part, is off the table for us. I'm Storm Track 12 meteorologist Les Stell here with your Thursday morning web forecast, and let's get right to it. Get out and enjoy today because the nice warm stretch of weather that we have been enjoying is over with. This may be the warmest that we are for the rest of this year, and we may not see warmth like this again until next spring. So again, get out and enjoy it. I'm going to go over the impacts with Sandy and also that much turn to colder weather coming our way as we head on through next week. Sunny and warm, temperatures in mid to upper 70s for deep inland spots, talking about low 80s at other locations. As we head on through overnight tonight, high clouds from Sandy start to build in, maybe some patchy fog inland spots. Clouds will continue to thicken up through the day tomorrow. Look for temperatures. Still not all that bad, just not bright and sunny like we've got today. And making our way into the mid to upper 70s as we head on through the day tomorrow. Already you can see some of those high, thin cirrus clouds streaming in across the southeast coastline. Meanwhile, as we've been keen in all week, it's the interaction between this upper level trough digging in. And it's got some abnormally cold air for this time of year digging in across the northern plains. You can see the stronger thunderstorms and, yes, the snow on the back side of it erupting through the Dakotas up into Wisconsin and Minnesota. Meanwhile, as we come a little bit closer east down here, it's the stage is set for Sandy to really have a major impact on us here in eastern Carolina. Here's the reason why. Take a look at our jet stream level up around 25, 35,000 feet. Notice this ridge sitting in here and notice where it goes. It heads to New England. So we've got this block in the upper levels of the atmosphere sitting over top of the storm. Meanwhile, here's Sandy trying to come up. And as a result, it's not going to be able to turn and extend out of the way towards Bermuda, as a lot of the forecast models, models earlier this week were trying to do. Tropical system, its sole job is to distribute heat in the atmosphere, so it looks for the path of least resistance. It uses these upper-level troughs to do that. So as a result, we're going to be looking at this, trying to make a connection back to this digging upper-level trough that's coming in here. And again, this just has some anomalously cold air associated with it. Here's how things play out on, this is the GFS model, but you will kind of notice here what happens is that you get the storm to move north to a point and notice how the height lines start trying to merge with this trough. That is what we're talking about as we generate a cutoff low pressure system right over the northern mid-Atlantic states. Now, the GFS is still trying to scoot this thing further out ahead of the trough, not capturing it body and soul. But uh, that is something that I am uh, concerned about, that this trough is really going to just cut off over the northern mid-Atlantic states, absorb Sandy, and you get a powerful storm that's going to make its way in towards the uh, northern mid-Atlantic states and Jersey coast. Here's the latest recon data coming in uh, as of this morning out of the center of the storm. Uh, you'll notice that uh, as it bisects its way through the center here, we've got uh, 99 to 100 mile an hour winds in and across the center of this storm. Uh, a lot of dry air on the eastern side of it, that is true, but take a look at one other factor that I'm looking at here. This is what we call ocean heat content. And what this is basically showing us here is, is that where all the warm sea surface temperatures are with this storm, and it's headed into an area as it makes its way through the Bahamas, on up the Gulf Stream that is going to be able to sustain this storm at a fairly strong pace. It may not be a hurricane by the time it reaches us, although it might. It's not completely out of the question. But it's going to continue to maintain a strong storm that is going to have an effect on us here in eastern Carolina. All right, let's take a look at the GFS. Again, I agree with it through part of the time period here, not 100%. I like as the track comes up through the Bahamas as we go on through tonight, tomorrow, some of those rain bands finally making their way towards the east coast from Florida up across the Carolinas here. By Saturday, we'll watch the rain continue to increase. Now, here's where I start parting with the system. I don't think it's going to escape off to the north and the east. I think it's going to, it will have a little bit of a jog, but then it'll get back onto a northwesterly track, and that looks like it is potentially devastating for the northern mid-Atlantic states, uh, especially if this thing goes in landfall near Atlantic City or even anywhere along the Jersey coast. Again, I'm not buying this solution where it simply escapes out to maybe come back in towards Atlantic Canada. I think it's going to be closer in here and then get pulled in as the upper-level trough tries to connect with each other. 
The official Hurricane Center forecast track takes it as a Category 1 storm towards through the Bahamas. And you will notice late Saturday night, Sunday morning, we've got some of our coastline that is in this tropical storm force band, this ring, if you will, the radius. Uh, and again, I kind of think it's going to continue to tend closer in towards the coast here. I think it passes maybe 150 to 250 miles off of our coast. Then it extends out, that I agree with, and then you kind of see it hooking back in. So still a lot of details left to be worked out with this system. Either way, though, it looks like we are going to be looking at some very high surf right along our coastal sections here. 15 to 20 foot waves are going to be possible just along the outer waters here. And even by Tuesday, we're still dealing with fairly high surf in the neighborhood. So this is how we break it down as far as the impacts. Greatest impact threat, I believe, is between Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. Heavy rainfall, we could be looking at two, four, six, or more inches of rain, especially to get closer towards the coast. Meanwhile, heavy rain along with the strong winds, probably 40 to 50 mile an hour winds, sustained inland spots, closer to 60 or 70 along the coastal sections. That's going to lead to some coastal flooding and, needless to say, also some rough surf. So keep that in mind for this weekend. Windy conditions as Sandy affects us for Saturday and Sunday will gradually clear things out as we go through Monday. Although, if it really wraps up and heads inland, it potentially could still hold on to some cloud cover, maybe some showers as we head in through the day on Monday. And then there's that colder air mass coming in as we change our weather pattern moving into the first part of next week. And again, enjoy today because it may not be this warm until next spring. I'm Storm Track 12 meteorologist Les Still.